So Res Life thought that we try to build some more morale in the halls, and uh, well, we thought, why not use the Rowdy Rattlers? One more minute! 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 We still have a few kinks to work out, but I like where we're going. Welcome, Rattler fans, to another edition of Talking Rattlers. David Tovar, Chad Peters with you, and we have a big show Saturday. Well, I should say this weekend, out the Super Bowl, St. Edwards in town. We have Kevin Kotzer on the show. We'll be talking baseball, softball, and what's another thing happening during the weekend? What, the big game that we can't uh, identify by name, I think. Yeah, I, I think it's just, yeah, it, the, it's uh, in Roman numerals. We'll be talking Super Bowl talk okay. as well. So, Rattler fans, stay with us, talking Rattlers and Kevin Kotzer when we get back right here on Rattlers Ustream Live. So, we all know times are tough nowadays, but... Uh, it's gotten pretty bad. Even Rattler Man had to live on campus. Oh, look at that. Right there. Oh! Shoot and... Oh! Hey, yo, bro, I gotta go right here, man. No, it's right over there, man. Hey, <laughs> what's up, bro? Rattler Man. Alex told me that you've been shedding while he's in the room, and that's just not cool. Needless to say, it might not work out. But we'll keep trying. And welcome back, Rattler fans. As promised, we're going to kick this show off with a bang. Kevin Kotzer on with me. Kev, thank you for joining us. And as you see behind us, practices begin. Kevin, uh, you, <laughs> you're you going to get into practice a little late. But Kev, tell us what you guys are practicing for this weekend. You got St. Edwards coming up. Of course, UTPB on Thursday, but St. Edwards, that big game upcoming. Women play at 12, the men at 2 o'clock right here inside the Bill Gray Arena. Kev, how do, you, how do you prep for the big rivalry game? I know you guys had incarnate word to begin the season, and now in the, in the big stretch of conference play at St. Edwards upcoming. Well, uh, St. Ed's, uh, they're a tough matchup. They shoot a bunch of threes. Uh, we got to defend the three very well. But... Right now, our, our focus is on Thursday, U2, Permian Basin. Uh, we had a really tough stretch of the first half up there, and we're trying to work, get better to uh, get the kinks out so we can come down and get that victory first before we worry about St. Ed's on Saturday. Now, Kev Swain over a little bit from Thursday and Saturday's action, a little bit about you this year. Three Harlan Conference Player of the Week honors, and of course, you're not keeping track of that at all, but tell us, your junior season, how have you, how have you better adapted to the style of play here in the Harlan Conference from your first two years? Uh, the style here is very physical. Mm -hmm. There's some teams that are very physical. There's some teams that are finesse. Uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, doing what I have to do so we can get victories. We're 5-2 and two right now. We're not exactly where we want to be, mm -hmm. but we're getting better every day and trying to improve that. And the accolades will come with team success. Last year, you guys got bounced in the first game of the Harlan Conference tournament. This team completely revamped, frankly. Talk about how the new guys, and, you know, of course, we've, we've seen the sharpshooters, Moses Sandufu and Daryl Taylor, and then a returning Lam Autry at point. Then you got Joe Monroe, Isaiah Matthews, just a bunch of new guys. How have you guys have all gelled and come together for that 5-2 and two start that you guys are seemingly looking to carry through this Harlan Conference stretch? Well, it's we've made some great additions. Uh, Moses and DT, they, they do what they do very well. They play defense. They shoot the ball well. Uh, Joe and Isaiah give us, me and Ray, and even Brad, Brad, coming back from a, bag, a big injury, uh, he helps us with the post play down low. They all help, they all have their uh, individual focuses that they help with. And practice too, we got uh, the Salta brothers in practice. Yeah. Uh, Nairman, who's now here. Yeah, Bryce, the point, Bryce and Mike, these two guys, they're, one's a freshman and yeah. one's a transfer. I mean, these guys don't get enough gap for what they do during practice. They help us prepare for everything that we do. Absolutely, and and it's been a collective team effort to get you guys to that five and two slot. And you guys are have been rolling this season. Now, before I let you go back to practice, Kevin, I know you're not exactly excited to get back. Uh, last week we talked so much about that huge victory against Arkansas Fort Smith. No, excuse me, it was against uh, 
the, with, with all the comebacks, with the big three-pointers, and, and, and you guys trailing by nine with about a minute remaining. Now, Kev, we talked about it as, as a broadcaster's perspective, as a fan's perspective, but as a player, not watching from the bench, a player on the court while the comeback was happening. Kev, tell me what was going through your mind within the last seven seconds of that game. Uh, excuse me, last seven minutes of that game. Well, we're just trying to scratch back and claw back every time that we got the ball. We had to, make, we knew we had to make stops. We knew we had to get crucial buckets when we needed to, and it, everything ended up working well. They made uh, Kingsville made mistakes, and we hit a couple of good big shots, and that's how we ended up coming back. Lamb's off balance three. Daryl's off balance three. Which one could you hit? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin. Right. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Rattler fans, stay with us. More upcoming right here on Rattlers Ustream, talking Rattlers. So we all know times are tough nowadays, but uh, it's gotten pretty bad. Even Rattlerman had a little on campus. Oh, look at that. Right there. Oh! Shoot and... Oh! Hey, yo, bro, I gotta go right here, man. Yo, it's right over there, man. Hey, <laughs> what's up, bro? Man, Alex told me that you've been shedding while he's in the room, and that's just not cool. Needless to say, that might not work out, but we'll keep trying. And welcome back, Rattler fans. Talking Rattlers continues this time live inside the Bill Greer Arena as the St. Mary's men's basketball team is on their way. Starting their practice, big games upcoming this week. David Tovar, Chad Peters with you. And Chad, Kev wouldn't look forward to it, but we sure can. And it's uh, UTPB Thursday, but the big one is on Saturday at tailgate 11.30 a.m. And then the women play at noon, and the men follow right around 2 o'clock. Chad, that's always a big one. And as an, as an alum of St. Mary's, you remember your, your days here as a student watching the St. Edward's games. I remember last year's St. Edward's game was rowdy. And uh, my freshman year was rowdy as well. So, I mean, that, that, and it's a Harlan Conference game. Two good teams. Taylor made for Super Bowl weekend. We had Super Saturday here. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, of course, the NFL holding their media day today. Yeah. Kind of, kind of our own uh, impromptu media day here. In, in, Indeed. Uh, in honor of the Battle of the Saints this Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a huge clash between the two teams. Uh, men's basketball reunion, in fact, here. Uh, mm -hmm. Buddy Myers helping put that together. We're hoping to get you know hundreds of former Rattlers uh, all the way from Doug Williams, one of the all-time greats. His name actually hangs up here. as number 52, retired. His family from, I believe, Virginia. Hope I have that right, but is coming in mm -hmm. to, to, to be part of this celebration. So St. Edward's game Saturday, like you said, the pregame tailgate, and that will go on before the women's game so it doesn't interfere with, with the women's game. The idea to get all the students in here, pack the gym for both St. Edward's games. And uh, that's brought to you by Rattler Weekends, in fact. So, oh, okay. You know, big shout out to them for putting that together. But yeah, I, I think it's going to be a staple game for the Rattlers just to get back on track. That's I mean, right. You know, they're one big shot away from being on a three-game losing streak right now. And, and this is a team that's been so dominant all season. So a big game for the men. And likewise for the women. The women uh, just a hair away from being one of the top teams in the Heartland Conference. So it's going to be interesting to see how both teams can, can kind of put their stamp on this weekend. I, I think the game against a and International, the three-point play, I think that's where it all went south for the Rattlers in that game. So they look to bounce back on Thursday and, of course, Saturday. You know, Thursday is important as well. It's a Heartland Conference game, UTPB, for the most part. And traditionally, plays us pretty well. Yeah. So I think Saturday's game, is also going to be huge for the men, not for the women. It's just for them to claw and stay within the first top four seeds. And, of course, what a better way to do it. Now, we, we talk about the basketball. We talk about the, the game perspective. But as a community, St. Mary's, I mean, it's St. It's Edwards. You know, I mean, I, I, I remember, and I've seen for the last two years, I've seen the soccer St. Ed Battle of the Saints. I've seen the softball, baseball. You've seen them all as well. Uh, even the tennis ones. I mean, they're all, uh, even individual sports. It is a rivalry. It's huge. And, and you know, you know, Bill Green, he's going to be rocking. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, I remember back to the Incarnate Word game. It was rocking. I, I, I would probably dare compare 
prior to that as well. And even I, I got to tell you, I got we got to congratulate our, our fellow Rattlers. They've done a great job since coming back this semester. They've done a great job filling up the gym. It's yeah. been full. It's been rocking. And the Rattlers have really felt it. And I think, you know, that they really were part of igniting that huge uh, come from behind win with these five three pointers and these seven minutes. Of, of of ecstasy almost in the last two of, <laughs> of regulation it, and the last five of overtime. We still gotta hype up that video. If you haven't seen it, check yeah. it out on, on the Ustream page. The recorded video, the all the hands going up in the air when DT makes that shot. And of course, Tony Morano's picture yeah, that inc that, inc that captures us. And, and we, we put that on the front cover of the program for the following game. And of course, the women's soccer players they kind of sit in that same area that yeah. you, if you were here for the game, you see where they are on that on that amazing shot, and all their faces just stunned, you know, biting their fingers. You know, and different like, looks of this, of that. I mean, and, we, and Katie we walked in. Yeah. I, I walked past the women's soccer players, and they were looking at the program. They're like, "Oh my gosh, my face! I cannot believe this." <laughs> Anya in particular. Yeah, and, and Katie stunned. tweeted uh, the picture. Yeah, she tweeted, and, and this is our expression. So I mean, it just uh, you know, the picture beautifully encompassing. But, I mean, shout-out to our Rattlers doing a great job of filling the gym and really coming out and showing support. And I think we're going to need it this Saturday against St. Edwards. Always, uh, you know, I mean, St. Edwards, the Battle of the Saints, you know, softball, soccer base, but it's something for basketball. Yeah. It, it's that college atmosphere that, you know, you see on, 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 you know, from the big, big schools. And, and well, this gym, no different from those. So, you know, really expected to be packed. And the thing you mentioned, how big this rivalry is. Back in the day, uh, I've heard stories that, you know, they used to go up to Austin for this game, and someone, you know, would dribble a basketball on the highway, and you'd have kind of a caravan of people walking yeah. part of the distance up to the uh, up to Austin, up to the hilltop. I think that's all. Robert Reed passed that along. Yeah, the, you're the right, great yeah. Robert yeah, Reed passing yeah. that along, and I was there as well. Robert Reed, a great, you know, great, great former Rattler to talk to, yeah. former Houston Rocket, and uh, for all the Houston Rocket fans out there. But absolutely, I mean, and he gave us kind of a, a scope of what the rivalry was back then and what it still is now. I mean, it's huge. I mean, we, we've talked to, you know, some of the, some of the people from St. Edwards, and, and they like to hype it up as well as, as long as, as, as we do. Likewise, I mean, it's just an absolutely, it's a rivalry. It's absolutely, I mean, does it come close to Incarnate Word? Absolutely. Incarnate Word are our crosstown rival. St. Edwards are conference and I think you could argue the Incarnate Word rivalry is on the way toward dying a yeah. little bit. Yeah. They're no longer a conference rival. They're potentially changing a d division status even. So I, I think that that rivalry is, is lessening by yeah. the year to the point where you know, like th just the, the, sem uh, the semantics of trying to, to build or logistics of trying to put together an event. Yeah. You know, security is one element you think about in the big rivalry games. You need bigger security. And St. Edwards is kind of, Tammy U is, is kind of starting to surpass UIW. Yeah, yeah, the, the schools don't necessarily love each other, yeah. but there's nothing at stake anymore. You, you have that's bragging true. rights, but what does that mean anymore? I mean, this game Saturday, that's for real. And it's, and it's for real as in the bragging rights, but more importantly, it's worth the Harlan Conference standings. They're moving and, and toggling positions. So it's going to be a big one. Remember, Rattler fans, the tailgate at 11.30 a.m. The women play at noon, and then the men follow at 2 o'clock. You can watch that right here on Rattlers Ustream Live. And, well, hey, more Talking Rattlers upcoming. Stay with us right here on Rattlers Ustream Live. So Rez last thought that we try to build some more morale in the halls, and uh, well, we thought, why not use the Rowdy Rattlers? One more minute! 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 Where's your key at? Where's your key at? Rattler fans talking Rattlers live inside the Bill Greer Arena. Behind us are the St. Mary's men's basketball Rattlers in practice. And I am joined by Robin Johnson. Rob, thank you so much for joining me. And Robin, St. Edward's coming up on Saturday. We're all excited. But UTPB comes in on Thursday, 5.30 women, 7.30 for the men. But also starting this week is baseball and softball. Thursday, the, the men, the women kick it off. Softball kicks it off Thursday. And the men on Friday. 
And Rob, you've uh, you've went out to Nelson Wolf, where it's going to be our home away from home for the men's baseball team. You took you took a tour of the stadium. That's if, if you're not familiar, that's where the San Antonio Missions play. And Robin, you took a tour of the stadium. Tell me what you what you were able to grasp. Well, I mean, uh, it's a great stadium. Uh, I think all of us are going to be spoiled after we uh, <laughs> yeah. after we spend the season there. But even uh, this big rivalry that's coming up, uh, the men and uh, the baseball team and the softball team, they're starting big. Uh, baseball is playing against starting uh, conference right away, playing Newman. Yeah. Uh, one game on Friday, a doubleheader on Saturday, and women are going to be involved in a 32-game tournament. Yeah. Uh, this a and and that's similar to a last year's. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, if you now Rattler fans, if you didn't remember last year's tournament that took place at the SISD Softball Sports Complex, Spring Sports Complex, it was 32 teams as well. It was a huge tournament, three straight days of softball. Now, Robin, you weren't here last year, but last year, uh, big rain similar to this week, and we were kind of talking about this yesterday, that the rain really delayed it last year, and it wiped away Thursday slate. So the games were pushed forward to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And that Sunday being Super Bowl Sunday. And, well, the rest is history. Now the last game, now here's a little trivia. The last game that was on Super Bowl Sunday, the same slot. Here's an here's here's interesting fact. Rattlers Ustream Live has gone head-to-head -head with the Super Bowl broadcast. That was last year. As we went head-to-head -head with the Packers Steelers, we were broadcasting Rattlers Incarnate Word. Now granted, I'm sure our, our commercials don't cost as much has a Super Bowl, but nonetheless, a very fun tournament nonetheless. Now, Rob, the both the men's baseball and the women's softball ranked number one in the preseason conference polls. That's pretty exciting if you're a Rattlers fan. Yes, exactly, and uh, the men's baseball team was, it was unanimous. All teams, they got all 12 votes for being number one, yeah. and uh, which is pretty impressive, and uh, they haven't had an offseason. If you check out the Rattler website, you can find a story on what they were doing over the summer, and four Rattlers were chosen to be on uh, a summer league uh, called the Copperheads, and it's they had to be specially selected, and it wasn't limited to D to D2. There was a lot of D1 players no. on there, and uh, the Rattlers starting pitcher this year, Junior Carl Neal, he had the third best ERA out of the entire league. Wow! So there's definitely no off season for them. And my favorite quote, uh, my favorite quote, uh, pretty much ever is we were talking to Charlie Meagle, the head coach, and he said. You know, them going up there and winning means that winning is a habit. And they, they were played on a team that last year got last place, and they turned that around, and they, they, got, they got the championship this summer. And winning looks to be a habit indeed. Well, Robin, thank you so much for joining me. Remember, Rattler fans, the ladies begin weather permitting the softball season on Thursday and the men from Nelson Wolf on Friday. And, of course, you can catch all of that on RattlerAthletics.com. Once again, Robin Johnson, thank you so much for joining me. We're taking a quick little break right here on Rattlers Ustream Live. Stay with us. More Talking Rattlers upcoming live from Bill Grigge Arena. So Rez Live thought that we try to build some more morale in the halls and uh, well, we thought, why not use the Rowdy Rattlers? One more minute! 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 Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! We still have a few kinks to work out, but I like where we're going. Welcome back, Rattler fans. Talking Rattlers live inside the Bill Greer Arena. Chad Peters back with me. And, Chad, it is a super weekend we have upcoming. And, well, before we get to Super Weekend Thursday, UTPB here inside Bill Greer Arena. 5.30 for the women, 7.30 for the men. And then Saturday, it's St. Edwards, the tailgate at 11.30 a.m. And the women tip it off at noon, and the men follow at 2. Then Sunday. Yeah, and really, before, before even Sunday, if you have weekend plans, just cancel them. Just park <laughs> yourself out here on campus. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, get the fuel, fuel up your car, be ready to drive back and forth between here, the SAISD Sports Complex, and, of course, Wolf Stadium because it's an, an action-packed weekend. I know you and Compliance Officer Scott Fonger have already packed up, uh, you know, a, a, you know some, some Wheaties and some, <laughs> some Cheetos and some sodas, and you guys are going to be making some trips. We're ready to go. Absolutely. Now, I hope you guys have also packed up some wings and some chips 
for Sunday's game. Of course, barring all, all weather for Sunday's game, it's the big one, Super Bowl 46 XLVI. It's the Patriots and Giants. Now, last week we talked about how we avoided a Alex Smith, Joe Flacco Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And we talked about Billy Cundiff and Kyle Williams. I didn't get your Super Bowl pick then. And I honestly still don't know your Super Bowl pick to the day. I don't think I've really gotten it from you. Yeah, we haven't talked too much about it. It's kind of hush-hush, top secret information here because... That we're, we're saving yeah. for talking rattlers. Now, yeah. well, sports information coordinator slash guru, Mr. Chad Peters, the world awaits. Your football analysis. Give us the pick. Patriots 31, Giants 27. Wow. I think they avenge uh, the Super Bowl four years ago. I think Tom Brady pulls an Eli Manning minus David Tyree <laughs> and kind of with Gronkowski. Yeah, I, the I, think, I think how healthy Gronkowski goes, and if not, Aaron Hernandez is a beast. That's right. I think Aaron. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked to see Aaron win an MVP. I mean, yeah. the, the man is is a monster. He can play both tight end. He's kind of a small receiver as well. I mean, the guy is great though. They've been playing him at running back some. And, yeah. <laughs> and they've had him at fullback as well. Versatility. I mean, they hand the ball off to him. That's true. Now the Giants, though, I mean, you can't look past them. Yeah. And, and 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 Rattler fans. As two Cowboys fans stand bef before you, we cannot openly root for the Giants. Correct. But I think we have to give them their credit where it is due. They beat us twice in, in sensational fashion. They have beat the Falcons in tremendous fashion. Yep. They beat the Packers in stunning fashion. And then they beat the, uh, they beat the 49ers in almost roaring fashion. So... Uh, Eli Manning, you know, it was a big discussion at the start of the season. Yeah. He said, yeah, I consider myself an elite quarterback. I think I'm a, I'm a top five guy. Yeah. Everyone laughed, thought he was out of his mind. Yeah. He certainly is elite. And, and they always say it's become cliche, but you can't spell elite without Eli. Eli, yeah. And, and it's true. I mean, the way – and, you know, for the longest time I thought he was lucky. And I really thought that that uh, – The that, Super Bowl drive, the yeah, drive to that, win. The glue on the helmet, you know, I, yeah. I thought, yeah, just pure luck. But – there's something to his game that he, yeah, he has an element of luck, but he yeah. creates it with his ability to escape. You, you think of him as an immobile big guy, yeah. but he, he's really quite mobile. He's able to uh, kind of curl out of the pocket, and then his ability to throw off balance is, I think, unmatched. And, and he's so unorthodox because some of his best plays, he looks uh, almost odd, but bizarre the way he throws it is because he's falling backward, throwing off his back foot, a throw, but throw to, uh, a floater down the field, but but there's some of the best plays you see in the NFL. It's amazing what he's able to do. But much credit to his receivers, though. You got Cruz, yeah. you got Victor Cruz, you got Hakeem Nicks. Can you salsa, by the way? I, <laughs> I try. Yeah. I do that in, in some ballrooms, but, I mean, great credit to his receivers, though. He's got some great receivers, and, and he seems yeah. to, I mean, Victor Cruz just seemed to have popped out of nowhere. Sure. Then Hakeem is able to make that play in the end zone, the Hail Mary against Green Bay. Some, you know, I mean, and, uh, and of course, we watched both the Cowboys games. I mean, the receivers were just well, was it the receivers or was it our defense, I think, before there's I finish? No, there's no Terrence Newman on the Patriots, so that certainly bodes well for New England and anyone who wants the Giants to lose <laughs> this game. Very true. <laughs> now, one more interesting storyline. It's the Super Bowl in Indianapolis, the home of the Colts, Peyton's arch rival, Peyton's little brother in Peyton's house. Yeah. That's got to be impressive. Do you think Peyton's going to be in the arena watching that one? I wouldn't be surprised if he is. It's amazing. I've never really seen during Super Bowl week a, a non-participant in the big game yeah. be such a storyline. And, and, yeah, Peyton's dominating the headlines, and only, really probably only he can. And, and it's just uh, even right down to the commercial you've probably all seen with him. And Jerome uh, Bettis yeah, and Papa John. Yeah. yeah, saying that, you know, well, I've got to you know, earn a living somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Man's got to live. Great commercial, by the way. Uh, now, Chad, i got to ask you, what is the most uh, – what's the funnest part about Super Bowl day? Is it the game? Is it the Star Spangled Banner before that? Is it the 11 hours of nonstop coverage? Is it bringing the friends and family for chips and wings? Is it the commercials? What is your favorite part of, of Super Bowl weekend? I don't want to sound like I'm backing out of the question, but I think it's all of it. You mm -hmm. know, I, I think just the way it all wraps together and forms an event. You know, no Forgot other, the halftime show. Yeah, no yeah. other football game can do that. I, I think, uh, you know, my fondest memory uh, of Super Bowl, without a doubt, is living in England when the Cowboys won Super Bowl 30 back yeah. in 95. The time difference was about six hours. So I think the game started at 11 o'clock or so, got over, you know, about 3 a.m. The joke on, on campus in middle school, I, you know, back then was that the uh, the day after the Super Bowl needed to be a holiday, <laughs> which I entirely agree with. Endorsed. But, and but uh, the food, yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, my parents made these wings. I, I still have the chips and dip salsa, uh, salsa helmet with the Cowboys helmet we use for chips <laughs> and dip. And I mean, yeah, it, only Super Bowl Sunday can bring that out, all the friends, the family. And, and it's really become a national like holiday. Yeah, you don't even have to like football to, to enjoy it. I think it maybe has surpassed Columbus Day. 
and it surpassed <laughs> President's Day, and it's on its way to overtaking the 4th of July. I think it's been that great. Uh, and I got to tell you, you're absolutely right. Super Bowl, my fondest Super Bowl, uh, I, I forgot what number it is, but it's the Steelers Cardinals. I watched it oh, yeah. from inside the hospitality suite as, nice. a ju as a senior in high school. Watched it there. Had my had my brother tied along with some of his friends. We watched in the hospitality suite. So Super Bowl St. Mary's goes hand in hand. Yeah. And remember this weekend, the Super Bowl and St. Mary's will be going hand in hand as the St. Edwards Hilltoppers come and visit the Bill Greer Arena. Remember, Rattler fans, we needed rocking. I, I got I got to say I'm a little offended that last year's Super Bowl party wasn't a little higher up on your list. <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday at the SAISD <laughs> Sports <laughs> Complex, watching the Rattlers UIW <laughs> softball game. I have very fond memories yeah. of that one as well. I when I have fond memories as I was telling Robin when she was out here. We, we competed with the with the Super Bowl. Yeah. We put we broadcasted head to head. That gets Super Bowl. Now we're not going to tell you the Nielsen's because, yeah. well, <laughs> they, they beat everybody. So I mean, we included ourselves, <laughs> but we went head to head with the Super Bowl and we with our Super Bowl of our own. The Rattlers against the Cardinal Word, I think, was the game at that hour, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a very fun Super Bowl. <laughs> We didn't really have any food, <laughs> but we, we had we had friends, we had people, That's we had right. a, game, a, a live game of our own, and we had your time. and we had your little phone yeah. that was our our uh, our window to uh, to America, yeah. <laughs> frankly <laughs> to what America was watching. So <laughs> I good remember time. that fondly now. Good, great time indeed, and some more good times this week. And remember, Rattler fans, the men's baseball. They start on Friday. Women's softball, all weather permitting, yeah. starts on Thursday. And, of course, UTPB comes into Bill Greer Arena on Thursday night, 5.30 women, 7.30 for the men. And then Saturday is our Super Bowl. It's St. Edwards. Tailgate at 11.30 a.m. That is brought to you by Rattler Weekend. And then the women tip it off at noon, followed by the men right around 2 o'clock. Well, Rattler fans, there you have it. Kevin Kotzer on the show. We want to thank him. We want to thank Coach Z for letting Kevin be on the show. Uh Chad, you got the Patriots, and uh, have, by the way, if anybody man. interested, I have you the Patriots. Out of this without giving your <laughs> and anybody interested, I have the Patriots as well. And it's not just because I'm a ruthless Cowboys fan, but I'm a Brady fan, yeah. I like Brady. So hopefully the Patriots make it. And boy, I don't want to see Eli with another ring. Just yeah. to be very honest. Indeed. Well, Rattler fans, that will do it from inside the Bill Greer Arena. We thank you so much for joining us, Chad Peters, Robin Johnson, David Tovar. Thank you for watching. This has been a presentation of Rattler Athletics on Rattlers Ustream Live.